Welcome to this episode of Cars Plus. The brakes on our 2007 Pontiac Solstice weren't as responsive as they should have been after a cold start. That didn't mean that the car was unsafe to drive, but the brakes would only degrade over time. We used our diagnostic tool and got the code P258B, which indicates that the power brake booster vacuum pump isn't performing as well as it should. The power brake booster vacuum pump assembly is deep down inside the engine bay, so we're going to show you how to remove the intake manifold, replace the electronic vacuum pump, and we'll clearly tell you the part numbers, tools, and torque specs you'll need to get the job right. Then we'll reinstall all of the other components. Here we are in the Solstice Roadster. We've got our code reader plugged in. We're going to turn the accessory position on the car. And now we're going to find out what we've got for codes. We've got one code. We're going to come down, read the code. We've got P258B, which is the code in this car. Now we're going to find out what P258B means. P258B, electronic vacuum pump performance. Now we know in this car that it does have a hard brake pedal at times, which is why the vacuum pump is on the car. And so it is most likely we've got a bad vacuum pump, but we're going to show you how to change out that vacuum pump. Right here you see your big intake tube. Your vacuum pump is located behind that tube on the engine. There's no way to show it to you at the moment because of where it is, but we're going to have to remove that tube in order to get to the vacuum pump. Step one, we're going to remove our bolt right here on our intake. This is a 10 millimeter. Loosen it up, we're going to take it out. We have another bolt here on the front. We're going to do the same thing. That's also 10 millimeters. We're going to take this one out. Be careful with your foot on this one. All right, here we're going to take off, or at least loosen the hose. You need a seven millimeter socket for it. And I've got my extension and a little wrench, so we can loosen this way up. And you definitely want to get it quite loose See as much room as possible to move the hose. Now that's one of two bolts that you've got to loosen or clamps. The other one is back up in here and it'll be very hard to photograph. So just the opposite end of the tube. So we're going to go in there, we're going to loosen that one also. You're going to have to loosen the clamp here also because we're going to have to pull this metal tube out of the way to get our rubber tube up by the engine off. This is also seven millimeters, but you need a much shorter extension. Loosen it up good and work your tool back out. Right down in here at your rubber tube, take a blunt screwdriver, and this is definitely a blunt one. Loosen your rubber if you have to, because we have to pull the metal tube out of the way. We're gonna rock the tube back and forth and pull up and it's still going to take some work to do this but you got to get it out of there once you've got that clamp loosened enough and you've wiggled the hose a bit and gone around with that screwdriver take a pry bar and watch you just pry it right out you'll notice why you have problems because you have this expansion ring on the actual tube. That's why it's so hard to pull. Now the objective is to loosen up our other end and hopefully get it out. And again, we may have to 
loosen up our clamp even more because there'll be a ring on here that it looks like I may have this one loosen up. It's coming out. Work carefully. Now the tube is out. Now you notice I did not disconnect the wiring here or this tube on the actual pipe. We're going to leave that and try to do this without taking that apart. All right, I couldn't show you this in the car because you wouldn't be able to see it because I'd be in the way. But I'm going to show you how you do it outside of the engine here. On the left-hand side, you're going to pull up. On the right-hand side, put your hand like this and push really hard while you pull up like this. That's how you're going to pull that tube out of the engine bay. You see the vacuum pump on the side of the engine. It's lit up down in there. It says GM on it. That's the piece we've been after. What we're going to do is take the lid off of our fuse box. If you look in your fuse box, you'll find out a whole list of all the fuses and relays. In this case, you're looking for number 19, which is the fuel pump. By my finger there, I'm pointing at it. Number 19. And number 19, when you look down here, is this relay right here, which corresponds to this location. That's the 19 relay. We are going to start the car, and then we're going to pull out that relay. The purpose of having that relay out is to make sure that the fuel pump doesn't work in the back of the car and we run out of gas in our actual high pressure fuel rail. So that's what that's for. We're going to pull it out. All right, if we look on the back of our fuse box cover, which I have removed, we have item number 19 here, which is our fuel pump relay. That's sitting over there on the car. I've taken that out. So I could get to item number 13, our fuel pump fuse. These relate to the fuel pump in your fuel tank, the electric one. We're disabling it. So we're going to pull fuse 13, and it's easier to do that with the relay number 19 removed. So that's why we've done what we've done. So we're going to pull the fuse. Fuse is out. Now we'll put the relay back in. Make sure I've got it the right way. There's the right way. It's back in. And now we're going to go start the car in just a moment and run it out of fuel to our fuel rail so we won't have high pressure when we have to disconnect. First thing we've got to do is we've got to pull our engine cover. And I'll tell you it's easier to do this from the passenger side than the driver's side. See, there are just four points there. We just pulled it off. Now there are a whole series of things that we're going to have to undo here in order to take this intake manifold off, mostly because they're sitting on top of it, some of it because it's sensors that have to be on top of it. Pop the little hose out of the clamp. That's one of the steps you're going to have to take. Right here you have one of your little units you have to take off. You have to press on the pink part here and we're going to work it off. There, I got it. So you a little press back and lift up, and you've got that particular item disconnected. Over here, we've got one that uses a wire. So you have to press in on the wire. You pull that one off. So you've got two of them. You have a third one right underneath here that you've got to work off and get it out of the way. Because each one of these things, as I said, is connected to your intake manifold, and it's actually problematic to have them in place when you're going to go and remove it. So let's go on and remove a couple other things so that we can get to this one and take it off. This particular assembly here on top of your intake manifold with all these vacuum lines, the easiest thing to do with that is just to take it off. 10 millimeter metric to remove these. Just need to loosen them up. Then you spin them out by hand. And that will get most of this assembly out of the way for you. We're going to push this line forward. And we're going to press down right there and pull. Press down in the center. Remember, I pushed line forward and pull. So now we've got that electrical connection undone. So we've got three electrical connections undone. We've got this vacuum supply system undone. We're going to have to remove this tube yet. We're going to get to that. We've loosened this one. Now what we're going to do is this is part of your fuel system, and we're going to have to get this loosened up. There are two 
points here. They're also 10 millimeters. So we're going to loosen those now and remove these two bolts. So now we have those two bolts undone. And this is loose, but you know it's got hard lines, so it isn't going to move a lot. We wanted it loose, though. We're going to undo the low-pressure side. I had to use an open-end wrench. We're going to do it on this fitting right here, which obviously I've loosened. The reason we're doing this side, the high-pressure side, can have several hundred pounds of pressure in it. So you do not want to undo it on the high-pressure side. So we'll do our low-pressure fitting right there. So our fuel is undone from the car. We have a vacuum line here that's going to have to come undone. So we're going to have to squeeze this clamp using the pliers and very carefully work off our rubber hose, probably with a screwdriver. Likewise, we have another vacuum connection that we're going to have to get rid of, which is down here. This is a problem, too. So we have two vacuum connections next. Next, as I said, we've got to take this vacuum connection undone. We're going to long those pliers. We're going to take our little clamp and move it up on the hose. That leaves the hose stuck on here. And so I'm going to get a screwdriver, and we're going to see if we can work that off. All right, we're going to work on our large vacuum line down here. And I kind of got to hold things aside, because I'm trying not to undo anything I don't have to really undo. Obviously, I've got a standard pliers this time. Squeezing my clamp, moving it up out of the way. And now we're going to have to successfully work this one off. I'll probably have to use my screwdriver and stuff to get it loose. All right, I've got the standard stubby, and I'm going to pull and push at the same time. And it comes right off. So now that vacuum line is off. Next, we have, which isn't visible from the camera, it's visible from my side right here, directly underneath this clamp, there is a bolt down here that's going to have to come out. We're going to have to release that to release this bracket. Otherwise, we'll undo all the bolts, and we won't be able to take that manifold off. So this bolt underneath this clamp here is next. Got a little 10 millimeter wrench so I can loosen this up. Obviously, you could work a ratchet system in here, but it's easier just loosen it, take it out by hand. Now, that bracket will no longer be fastened, obviously, to our intake manifold. We also have this bracket right here, and I'm going to take out that 10 millimeter bolt likewise. Use the ratchet, we'll remove that one. Let me finish taking it out by hand again. Along your intake manifold, you have a, a bolt here, 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 and you have the one you can't see down under here on the back. Probably not possible for you to see that. That makes a total of five bolts that are going to use a 13 millimeter in order to remove them. So we're going to have to work on removing those. I'm probably going to need a larger wrench because that's on there with quite a bit of torque. So I'm going to get a larger wrench, but it is a 13 millimeter that we have to remove. All right, we've got a larger wrench here. And that makes all the difference in order to take off these 13 millimeter bolts. So as I said, there's a grand total of five of these that have to be removed at this point. There are 13 millimeters. So I'm going to remove those, and we'll be back with you for the next step. All right, we're going to loosen up another one of these. And if you have one, you can break out your air ratchet. Take it out that way and save yourself some handwork. This particular bolt down in here, because this bracket is still on here, sort of in the way, you're better off with a universal. I've got a snap-on style universal here that I'm going to use that goes in, and that gives me enough of a swivel that I can undo this one. So you probably want to have a universal to undo that bolt. All right, our back hidden bolt, you notice I've got that same 
universal style extension, but I'm not using it as a universal, but you need a long one because of the angle and it being down there underneath the bracket. So you'll need a long extension to make this easy. You could be up in here and do it, but I think the long one makes it much easier. All right, we have two nuts, one here, one over here located on studs. You're going to need a deep 13 millimeter socket to take those off. In the center of the screen, you'll see a bolt hole. I've off camera removed a 10 millimeter bolt from that point. That's the bracket holding the oil dipstick to the intake manifold. Now you'll notice our intake manifold is loose, but because we have the large wiring harness on this side and we have two bolt, actually studs, left here, this doesn't want to come out yet. So we're going to pull the two studs. To pull these studs, you need a six millimeter female Torx socket. And we're going to put it on here and we're going to pull the studs out. And they come out fairly easy. That should give us the ability to remove the intake manifold. Both studs have been removed at this point, but you can see we got all this dirt in here. We're going to vacuum it off before I actually lift that intake manifold out. Hopefully we will be able to ultimately work this out. That's not... In the center of the light is the hidden bolt. Now I'm using a pry bar to pry the actual wiring harness back so you can see it. And the only way I could get to that is with the combination we'll show you here. Here we have the intake manifold, it's out. I'm going to explain how I got it out because I would have been totally in front of the camera to kind of show you. But I also want to show you this particular piece. This piece was the only other thing holding the manifold in. i screw it in just a teeny bit. It goes right here. This was the 13 millimeter bolt. This is a bolt stud combination next to it. it uses 10 millimeters. You have to get it out in a similar manner to the 13 millimeter next to it. But on top of it, in the car, pushed on, is a holder that holds the wiring harness. You just have to push that off and take this out. All that sounds easy. It's not. It's very difficult to get it out. But once it's out, you can then take the manifold and make a motion like this. Pull back and up as a rotation, and you'll be able to get it by this bracket. Because this is your high-pressure fuel pump, if you watch that video. Gets it by this bracket without having to remove the bracket. But, on the bottom of your manifold, the bottom of your intake manifold, you have one more sensor you've got to undo. This sensor right here uses this gray clip, and you remove the gray clip using a little screwdriver like I have, and gently pry it out. Then you can take that out. So what will happen is you'll get it about this far, and you have to undo your sensor at this point. Then you can take the manifold out all the way. Here is the auxiliary vacuum pump for the car provides additional vacuum pressure for your braking system that's hidden way down there underneath your intake manifold we're going to be replacing that vacuum pump now as you notice at least with the intake manifold out we can definitely get to this bolt there's a second bolt combination and it's a bolt and nut combination so you really need to do this because you've got no way to get to the other one without taking out that intake manifold you also have to disconnect this fitting, and there is a connection here electrically that we've got to undo that's now, you can see the yellow on that connector, that's got to be undone. So we're going to work to start undoing this vacuum pump. On our vacuum pump, what you do is you have to press down to release it and pull the connector apart. I couldn't show you that in the car, so you press down here and pull the connector apart. This is the vacuum fitting off the side of the vacuum pump. It has this stupid clip here made of plastic. And even being very careful, I'm not surprised since the plastic is as old as it is that the clip broke. And you'll see I've got the other part of the clip in my hand. And you know it pushes in there and you have to release it back out. But unfortunately you look at how thin that is on top and that actually snapped right there. 
Now, I'm not so certain it actually won't work when I put it in, but I may try and obviously try and find another one. This is the point where the fitting goes on and that collar is retained by that plastic piece that I showed you that had broken right here. We go around there. As you can see on the side of the vacuum pump, on the left side of it, that's a 10 millimeter bolt. It has a nut on the bottom. There's another one that's kind of hidden. That one's hidden over underneath here. There's room under here, but this little piece of insulation hides it from view. Now here's the old pump removed, and this is the vacuum fitting in my hands. And this will pull off now, but you see there's a ring here. Well, in taking it off, I broke the little clip, and it's right here. There's the clip that got broken, which isn't surprising. It's got a very small top. However, there's the exact same clip right there that we're going to replace it with. And here's your Dorman part number, because you'll probably break the same clip. 800-023. And they're fuel line connector clips that are actually used to do this vacuum connection. So that's what you need. That's the part to replace it, and you'll be able to put it back together. This is your bolt assembly. There are two of them that go to putting in the vacuum pump. This being the bolt from the top. And it uses a flange nut in the bottom. The reason they're doing that is you can't see it, so your flange nut sits in your wrench. And of course, it's got the little tip on there so you can get it in when you're not looking at it to tighten it up. And I can't show myself doing that because I'm totally in front of the camera. So you're going to install the two bolts, reversing the process, and you have to use the flange nuts to make it work. So I'm going to put it back together and show you that when it's done. But we got one other thing to show you before I finish putting it together. Now we have the old vacuum pump here. You'll see on the back of the clip, this is slotted. That slotted portion goes on a bracket down there that you slide the connector on. It'll be very apparent when you're doing this where you're going to slide it off and where you're going to slide it back on. I'm just reminding you, you have to slide this. You can't yank it off when you remove it. And obviously, you're going to slide it back on. All right, right down in there, you're seeing the installed vacuum pump. We've reconnected the electrical, obviously, tightened the two bolts, and connected the vacuum line using the part we showed you to replace the broken clip. Now we're going to show you another thing you need to know about installing that vacuum pump. This is the original vacuum pump. However, these are the mounts off of the new pump. They just slide in and out of here. So you see, I can, with a little effort, I can push that all the way back in, and you really can. Probably have to push on with like a screwdriver, but you can push it in. But what you need to do is slide the old mounts out of the GM pump, slide them on the new pump, and Trish is going to give you the number for the pump that you can get off of Amazon that's the same part, except that you have to change the mounts out. This is the fuel rail insulation piece. Now, I didn't show taking this out. All you do to take it out is rotate it. So we're going to rotate it back into place. And it's a little futzy to get down in here, of course. A little work, the whole thing will go back in. The toughest part is getting back behind that alternator to get everything back where it belongs. But that's really all there is to it because it's not held in place other than by sheer force of will and its little shape. So you rotate it back in like that. This is the new intake manifold gasket. You notice it says for service. This side towards intake manifold that's important. Over here, though, is the part number. Now, it may not show on the screen. I'm going to read it. 1258936666, and then there's a space 006. This part's available on Amazon for $10.05 if you're a Prime member. Even if you had the shipping on, it's going to be it's very inexpensive. So that's our new intake manifold gasket. We've obviously cleaned off the surface here. 
use the little brake cleaner to wipe it down. Another thing before I put it in place, let's look at one other thing. Your two studs are only rounded holes. Your bolts have these try holes in them. So you can tell where the two studs go that way. So we're going to set this in place. And it's just sitting there, and you notice it won't stay quite up. That's really what the studs were at the factory, obviously, to hold this in place when they were assembling it. Now we cleaned up the intake manifold with brake cleaner. You can get the cheapest brake cleaner you can get and a toothbrush, and it's largely clean. It's not perfect, but it's quite clean. Down here, we have to reconnect this particular connection. It's just going to press on there, but you won't be able to see it because when I press it on, I'm going to have to have it upside down or at least sideways to the point where you probably can't see that I'm doing it. When you're putting that particular connector on the bottom of your intake manifold, be sure you keep this tube on top. We're going to pull out our dipstick here. I'm going to get a towel. I'm just going to pull it out so this is not in our way of putting an intake manifold. We're going to pull out our dipstick tube uh, here and clean it, and we're just going to set it aside so it's not in our way. Now we're going to start wrestling this into place, and I'm not going to tell you it's going to be simple because you had to sort of force it in here. And it's going to take some jostling to get it back past everything again. The reason it's as hard as it is, is you're fighting against particularly the large wiring harness here. And that's to the point where I can probably work it on the studs if I put, start putting studs in. On your intake manifold gasket, if you look back in the video, you'll find out there was a little tab you can kind of pull on. And obviously, i got to get the tab pulled on and get the hole and everything to line up over here and get the stud restarted. And all I want to do is start it because i got to get the opposite end on here, too. And make sure I line it up. I'm going to get myself an awl. All right, I'm going to use an awl to make sure I lift the gasket on the end closest to the passenger compartment. Try to keep it in place, and I'll get the stud and put in there. Now we'll be trying to get our stud started on this end. Okay, it looks like I probably got that started. So I've got the two studs started. Those are your Torx drive, 6 millimeter. So I'm going to tighten those down. But we need to know a torque spec. All right, we're going to tighten these up just roughly. We're not going to torque them yet. We will give the torque spec and do that in a bit. But right now, I'm just going to tighten these down to where they don't turn. Because as you may have noticed on the stud, there's an unthreaded part. That's what we're turning down to. All right, you notice the two bolts here. This one has a plastic piece on a plastic collar. In the intake manifold, there's a plastic collar at each point one of these bolts goes in. Two of them came out when I took out the bolts. What we're going to do is push our collar up about that far, and we'll install the bolts. So I have to take and make sure I get the ones with the collars on them in the two holes where they came out. Otherwise, you just put the bolts in place. Five bolts, one here, one here, one here, one here and the other one hidden under here have all been started. Now I'm going to go back and snug them all up. Then we're going to do our torquing and we'll give you the torque specs. Your bolts here are 22 Newton meters, which would be 16 foot pounds. Your nuts are also 22 Newton meters or 16 foot pounds. Your stud though is less. The stud comes in at 15 Newton meters or 11 foot pounds. So this is a different setting. So this is only 11 foot-pounds or 15 newton meters. All right, we're going to tighten these down. And I'm not going to go fully tight on any one of them right away. We'll work our way across. The reason for that is you should never torque all at once on a bolt, especially when you're working multiple bolts like we are. Flash that out of the way. So you go all across. Ideally, you're going to go three times, and the third time they're going to click, and you'll have reached your torque setting. Gradually bring them up.
Now that one just reached torque setting because that's what the click's about. So I had that one a little tighter than the others. That one just reached torque setting. So I haven't got my front one very tight, obviously. There it is. There it is. And there it is. Now I'm going to check them again, but first I'm going to do my two studs. Okay, the torquing is complete here. To do these two, I had to have a deeper socket, so they were done separate. Everything's been torqued all the way across the settings we gave you. Now the next thing is to put back these two bolts that you can't really see. The one is the bolt that goes right here that goes to the engine brace. The other bolt is the bolt with the nut halfway down that goes right here, which is for holding on to your, uh, your bracket, but also for holding your large wiring harness. They're going to be very difficult to put in. They're very difficult to put, take out, and there'll be no way you can watch me do it, but those two have to go in next. So the engine brace is the one on this side, and this clamp, or bracket, pardon me, back in here that is loose, there it is right there, goes on this side. And so that's the next step, but it's impossible you watch me do it, put them in. All right, down in here, we've got the two bolts reinstalled, the 13 millimeter, which is on this side. And the one that's lit up is that stud bolt. You notice I put the clamp back on here. Now the way to put those back in that I came up with was to use a very long extension, put a neodymium magnet in there, and work my way, bring the camera over here, we're going to show, we're going, you have to work your way underneath your overflow tank underneath your tank for your brake fluid and work in there. Ultimately, you'll have your ratchet right about here where my finger is, right, right here, in order to put those two bolts in. But if you put magnets, neodymium magnets, down inside of your sockets, you should be able to accomplish it. It was actually much easier than taking them out. Other things to note here, we've put back our dipstick but remember, right next to the dipstick, there's a 10 millimeter bolt on the bracket that holds a dipstick assembly. I've also put that in. It's down here. You wouldn't have been able to see me do it because it's even sort of hidden what I'm talking about. It's right down here on this end of the intake manifold. Let's see if I can light it up for you. There's the 10 millimeter bolt that's been put in. Over on this side, you'll notice the rest of this bracket that we bolted down below with the stud we put the bolt in top right here, and we slid our hose back in that particular holder. Now we're going to show you the rest of the things step by step as we go through and attach them. Here we have a vacuum line off yet. So we're going to push our vacuum line on. And then I'm going to grab a pliers, squeeze the clamp, and move the clamp back to its original position. Clamp's reposition. That should be good. Next, we're going to bring over this assembly, put it back in the hole, and this is one of our 10 millimeter bolts, so we're going to bolt that down. This one's become a little trapped under here, there we go. This is our fuel system. I'm try to weasel it back through here. There we go. Now it's back out of the way. And we're going to reattach it and fasten it down. And I'm going to start the end before I bolt it down. All right, now I'm going to tighten that up in just a moment, but I'm going to bolt these down now, then I'll finish tightening over here. 10 millimeter bolts again, two of them, one on each of these little towers. Start the one, start the other, 
and we'll go about fastening these parts in place. We'll put our hose back in the clamp. And unfortunately, this is the one size I don't seem to have around here. So I'm going to get the adjustable on it again. Now we have to bring our assembly back here and remount it here. And then we're going to attach our little hose. I'll probably at least push the hose on for the moment. So it's not wandering around. And again, these are 10 millimeter bolts. Now those are started. I'll tighten these off camera. All right, we press the vacuum line on. We're going to have to reset this green hose clamp. Bring it down. And it's going to take me a couple times. I'm going to go around the corner there. Grab it again and bring it clear down. So now we reset the hose clamp. So that should seal that off. Next, we're going to reattach our various plugs. We got this plug here. And you notice I had to push down on the wire just a bit to push it on. You've got your plug here that goes in and snaps. You've got your plug here, which goes in and snaps. So now we've got all the wiring redone. Now we have one more 10 millimeter bolt, and that goes in the back of this bracket right here into the intake manifold at this point. You can see where I'm putting it in. It's right there. I'm going to tighten that one up off camera. Here we are with our intake side going into our intake manifold. We undid that earlier in the video. We're just going to reinstall it in reverse process to put it on. And we'll do that off camera because you've seen us take it off. All right, we're going to give the solstice a start up now. We've already cleared the code out of it. We don't know whether we fixed it. We do know we put in a new vacuum pump. We've got it all back together and we'll start her up and see how she runs. <laughs> Seems to be running happy, but I will tell you, if you go to doing this job, this is probably a 9 to 10 out of 10. It's a hell of a lot of work and fairly difficult to do because of some hidden bolts. So changing out a vacuum pump, which I hope permanently solves the problem and I'll only know over time, is very hard. You might want to take that to a professional. Seems to be right. 